back in, my name is Bonnie. In my channel, I talk about my houseplant and my hoys. First of all, Happy New Year. I hope everyone is having a great start in 2023. Today, it is a special view again because I am still traveling and I'm very happy to share with you the background view that I have. In this video, you will see the background like this without any plants, unfortunately. But the topic that I'm going to talk about today is pretty interesting because I am actually looking forward to watch content related to today's video, which is the wish list plant in 2023 because I have been obsessed with Hoyas since a while ago. So today it would be the top 10 Hoya that I have on my wish list for 2023. Before you continue watching, or during the time when you're watching this video, don't forget to put in the comment of which are the top wishlist plant, including Hoyas or other houseplant, or even other outdoor plants that you would like to have in 2023. Without further ado, let's go through the first top one Hoya that I would like to obtain in 2023. I first saw this Hoya in Cerise's Facebook. And then later on, I managed to see that in real life quotation in a video with Ivy. If you're interested to see that footage, you can go to the video that I have done with Ivy for the Hoya tour last year. The name of the Hoya is Hoya Acuminata. I'm not really sure when this Hoya is discovered, but I just recently saw it, as I mentioned. I think it may be half a year ago. I saw that in Cerise's Facebook, and it is very, very interesting flower shape because the edges of the corolla is very elongated and then is also quite long. And then it also have this kind of pearly shine on the corolla. And with the corona, it is also this kind of whitish um, light color of the corona. And um, even though I saw the pictures, I didn't really know too much about this Hoya. Um, I'm not very sure about the flower scent because I never really seen this in person. If you have this Hoya, please let us know in the comment box down below. Is there any floral scent in your experience? That is the first Hoya that I would like to have. I know that this Hoya is pretty pricey. At least last year, it cost a couple of hundred US dollars just for one note. So I will be patiently waiting and hopefully later of this year, we'll have more in the circulation and hopefully that I can pay a bit less to get this Hoya. And the second Hoya that I have on my top 10 wish list Hoya is Hoya Bakuensis Outer Variegated. Again, I saw this one, I think the first time I saw this one is from LB Garden. He was telling me that there is a new species that has been discovered or available in Indonesia probably half a year ago. The price is unfortunately out of my budget, so I didn't really get from him, but I also saw in real life quotation in a video when I go through um, Ivy's plant in her greenhouse. And at that time I saw how pretty and how delicate this plant is. They have really small leaf, just like Bocoensis with no variegation. But the very interesting part is that it has very different dynamic variegation on the outer part. And if you give it a little bit more of light, it also turn a bit purplish, especially at the time when it just pushed out new leaves. Based on that, I just really like the leaf coloration. In addition to that, I also like the tiny little buds of Hoya bacuensis. It is very beautiful when it comes to the tiny corolla and corona. It's probably just like maybe one centimeters for the entire umbel. It also smells um, pretty caramel scent. So it is a super all-rounded uh, Hoya. Hopefully in 2023, the price will go down a little bit and I will have the opportunity to get that and see it in real life. The third one is Hoya Cressi Petiolata Inner Variegated. Now this one, the first time when I saw it, I thought it was fake. I saw it on Instagram and it is just mind blowing. It is because the dimension of the variegation is unlike 
any variegation that I've seen. It has this kind of um, muted um, coloration on the leaf. Um, on the leaf, it's not um, like shiny leaf, but in fact. In the picture, and that's the only thing that I have seen, when I look into the picture, the surface of the leaf is muted, which means it's not shiny and it's just this fascinated paper like texture and you can also see that from the picture it has this very dynamic coloration not just a cream color but it has this kind of splash as well because Cressy Petiolata splash is also embedded in this variegation and I also noted that the price range of this Hoya is completely out of my budget. I, I don't know, at one point I thought it was more than 1,000 US dollars, but again, these are wishlist plants, so not necessarily mean that I'm going to have it this year. It's just something that I really wanted, at least to see it in real life. So let's hope this year I can have it in a more affordable range, but I would love to share this with you because maybe some of you are very interested in this type of Hoya and maybe then I can see a video in real life from you. And another thing I really like about Cressy Petiolata is I don't have the variegated version, of course, because it's still on my wish list, but I have um, Cressy Petiolata Splash. I love how the splash turns out on the leaf. It is very different for each leaf and also the leaf shape is just about the right size. Um, it will be really good if it's even more smaller but then the leaf shape is like this size. I would say around three centimeters large and it's just make the entire plant looks very nice both hanging or trellis and um, it's just amazing when it comes to how even without variegation. So if you have it in a variegated version, you already know why it is so pretty. As I said again, dynamic variegated leaf color and also the texture. The texture on the leaf is not shiny, but that kind of muted paper serves like it's just amazing. The fourth one is something that I've never seen on Instagram, but I have seen it on internet. This is Hoya Serpent's Inner Variegated. As you can see in this picture, it looks unreal uh, because Serpent's itself, it's already super cute. But then you see this picture, it is so small, but at the same time, it has so many variegation in this one tiny leaf, like maybe just one centimeters large. And you can also see it looks like, um, how can I say, it looks like a grape, but the same time it is this tiny little great super rounded shape and it also have this kind of um, um, concave shape on the leaf as well so it's just make this plant looks unreal this is the only picture that I have seen online I really like it and I really think this plant when it comes to the market when I see it uh, available in the market it would be extremely expensive but again I will wait this is my wishlist Hoya in 2023 but it could still be my wishlist in 2024 2025 or even longer and um, let me know in the comment box below if you have seen um, serpents variegated in real life or if you have heard about it all I know is just this picture and uh, I'm really interested to know if you have seen this before the fifth one is slightly more common but I still haven't seen it available from where I can get. It is Hoya Lee Variegated and the name is Prism. I like it because it has this very beautiful elongated leaf shape, but at the same time, it is very small, just like any Hoya Lee that you have seen. But the interesting part of this is it also have a little bit of splash and because of the outer variegation, it doesn't have a lot of variegation across the entire leaf. It has majorly green. However, when the outer variegation is under a more intense light, it has this purplish pinkish color together with this splash color on the main green leaf. It's just completely fascinating. I would love to have one of these. I think um, this is slightly more available in the market. Maybe 
this year would be a little bit more affordable. But as I said, I think the last time I have seen this one is a couple of hundred US dollars. Again, it is out of my budget, but I would be patient and I hope I will get it one day um, because I think the Hoya Lee is relatively easy to root. Um, hopefully it is the same for Lee Prism. Please let me know in the comment box down below if you have this um, variegated Lee. Is it as easy to root as the one that we have as the green version? Please let me know in the comment box down below. The sixth one is a recently available Hoya. It is Hoya Carnosa Haliana. I saw this one from Basie Plant and he showed the very small, slightly ruffle leaf shape and I immediately fall in love with this Hoya. It just have all of the characteristic that I like. First of all, I'm not a big fan of Hoya Carnosa because of the leaf shape is relatively large and this one. It's a mini version of Carnosa and together with the ruffly leaf shape and the smaller size, it just stick all over the box. And I know that Hoya Carnosa is very beautiful when it comes to the pinkish flower. And I would love to have this one this year. I also know that the price range is not very friendly at the moment. Again, I also heard that this Hoya grows very, very slowly. Maybe it is because it has the compactor jeans in it. Please let me know in the comment box down below if you know if this is actually a cross, because from just from the picture and from video, it reminds me a bit of the Carnosa Compacta variegated together with some nature of Carnosa. But I don't really know where the small leaf shape is coming from because Compacta is relatively large and Carnosa generally is relatively large. Let me know if you know what kind of cross Carnosa Pollyanna belongs to. Now move on to some even smaller leaf species. There are two that is super small and is relatively rare uh, because I haven't really seen a lot of people having in their collection. The seventh one is Hoya Boisai. I have only seen one picture of this Hoya from Cerise's Facebook. I also saw that in one of the publication of new Hoyas of 2022. This Hoya has very small leaf and also very thin. It reminds me of maybe I am 08 or I am 04, that type of very thin Hoya leaf nature. But uh, I have never really seen anybody circulating this. As I said, I only saw this in Cerise's Facebook and this picture is the only real life picture I've seen. If you have seen this at Hoya, or if you have this Hoya, please let me know in the comment box down below, is this a difficult one or it is actually as easy as IM08? Because for IM08, it is relatively easy to root, even though it looks very um, fragile. It actually grows really fast once it is established and it just trail everywhere. As long as there is something that it could hang on to, you will see a super long, thin, tiny tendril all around. And the eighth Hoya is an even tinier Hoya that I have seen. Again, it also have this correlation of the leaf shape and leaf size of Hoya IM08. I saw some people having this comparison picture between these two. Um, this one is Hoya Unithroda. The first time I saw this one is the video from Summerain Oak when she visited Toril Nuhus in, in her home uh, in Sweden. I saw that um, Toril has showed this uh, very, very small leaf Hoya um, in one of her cabinet. And from then on, I was really interested to see this in person. I have seen Hoya Passion selling this one with the price tag uh, on it. And as you can see in this picture, it assembled a lot with IM04 or IM08 because the leaf shape is very similar, just like the pinky, uh, the nail of the pinky. It's really, really tiny. And However, it has quite prominent vein and you can see that even though the leaf shape is very, very small, the vein just looks quite intense, um, if you ask me. Let me know if you have this Hoya. Um, how does the flower look like? Have you ever seen a picture of the flower? If you have, please leave the link below and I can check that out. And 
if you have this Hoya, is this a difficult one? Looks like it is because it is very small and very thin. Um, I would love to know more about that and what is your cat tips of Hoya Uni Flora. The last three is Hoya Lacunosa species. The eighth one is Lacunosa outer variegated clone too. I have seen this one several times and I know that it has been circulated quite a lot uh, later last year but um, I haven't seen anything. Um, I haven't seen a circulation in my uh, area yet so I haven't bought anything um, but the reason why I really like this one why I wanted this is because I saw it in Ivy's tour. She showed me that there is actually two clones. Clone one is also really pretty in its way but um, the variegation is not very stable. Sometimes it pushed out very variegated outer variegated leaves. Sometimes it pushed out a completely green leaf just like a normal round more heart shape uh, lacunosa. And she also told me that clone 2 is a much more uh, stable clone when it comes to the variegation. And I have the inner variegated one, which I'm so happy that I finally get it. It's just really, really pretty. And thank you very much uh, for trading that with me. I really want to see in real life the outer variegated one with a very nice uh, stable variegation for the clone too. And the ninth one is Hoya Lacunosa Perengian Durian. I saw this the first time from Betsy Begonia's video talking about her different varieties of Lacunosa she owned. And at that time she showed um, the smallest leaf Lacunosa, Hoya Lacunosa Perengian Durian. It's a bit difficult to pronounce that word. But it's just really nice because I love tiny small leaf shape. As you know, I just mentioned about the Unifrora and also Boisai. And now this one. This is the smallest leaf um, subspecies of Lacunosa. It also has this kind of um, sun stressed um, coloration. I saw different uh, pictures when it has a more intense light, it turns deep purple and also with a lot of splashes. So this is definitely one of my favorite when it comes to Lacunosa species. Well, all of these are my favorite. That's why it comes to top 10 2023 wish list Hoya. So let me know if you have this smallest leaf Lacunosa, is it as easy care as any other Lacunosa? Or this one is slightly more difficult because it is a smaller version. Last but not least, the last Lacunosa subspecies that I would like to have is Hoya Lacunosa Laos. I know this is not a very rare one because a lot of people has already shown that picture in on Instagram or a lot of people have mentioned about this even on YouTube. Um, but I haven't had it yet. Uh, I'm just uh, waiting uh, for the moment to come and then I will grab one. It is just very nice when it comes to the sun stressing. I mentioned about the Perengian durian. It has this deep purple splashy color. It is very different from Lacunosa Laos because this sun stressing, instead of darkening the color, it actually has a lighter color. After I have saw the video that uh, Ivy showed me of her uh, Lacunosa Laos, it's just so fascinating. I really want to have some lighter color, um, sun-stressed um, Hoya leaves. Um, it's more like um, orangey yellow color after it has sun-stressed. Before it's sun-stressed, I think the coloration is already two tones lighter than the general Lacunosa, but after it has sun-stressed, it has two tones lighter even. So then it's more like a light orange color. And not only it has this light orange color, it also have this splash on top of it. So then it just make a very nice landscape, if you understand what I mean. In my male spoke cabinet, if I have something more light together with some darker sun stress color, it's just make the coloration very interesting and dynamic. So these are the 10 Hoyas that I would love to have in 2023, but I also understand a lot of them are out of my price range, especially the Cressy Petirolata variegated Hoya. Let's see how this goes. Maybe it goes to my 2024 wish list next year as well. But let me know in the comment box down below what are your wish list Hoya for this year or 
if you have any of these Hoya, what are the tips you would like to share with everyone? If you like this content and you would like to support me making similar content, please don't forget to like this video and share this video with your friends. If you like this channel and you don't want to miss out next time when I posted similar content, don't forget to hit that subscribe button so you won't miss out next time. Until next time, I wish everyone is having a great start of 2023 and I will see you in the next one. Bye!